Hey everyone, Steph here. Now in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through 13 of the best designer crossbody bags. If you are in the market for a luxury crossbody bag, you can't afford to miss this video. I've been collecting designer bags for over 10 years now, and that's how I'm able to pull this video together today for you. And if you stay tuned until the end, I will reveal out of the 13 that I take you through, uh, which one I think is the best everyday crossbody, which one I think is the best evening crossbody, and the best value for money. If you like any of the bags that I'm about to take you through, then don't worry, I've got you covered. If you want to purchase any of them, I will pop some links in the description box down below. Okay, let's get straight into the video because we have 13 bags to go through. The first crossbody bag, this is probably one of the most popular cross crossbody designer bags ever, of all time, okay? This is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse bag. And I'll, I'll show you why, I'll go through kind of the pros and cons that I've found with the bags that I've currently got. So the Pochette Matisse, you can get this in the normal monogram canvas, you can get it in the reverse canvas, that's the one that I decided to go for, just because it looks a little bit different. You can also get them full leather versions and in some bright like solid colours, some nude colours. I really, really like them. And the reason this bag is so popular is just because it's so useful. It only comes in one size, so you don't, you know, size paralysis, you don't get that. It's just, this is the size and it is, I would definitely say, a really great bag for everyday use. So there's three ways that you can wear this bag. You can use the top handle like this. This one has a black leather top handle there, so you can choose to carry it. But you also get, best part of the bag, a detachable strap here. Uh, so you can use it as a shoulder bag or obviously as a cross body bag like that. It sits, I think this is one of the best bags in terms of how it sits on the body. It sits at the perfect height, but depending on your height as well, you can adjust the strap here. Now I'll just show you around the bag really quickly. To open the bag, you simply pinch these together. This pops the lock here. And I've currently got this stuffed with uh, bubble wrap. Um, but you get two large compartments there, which keeps things separate, which is really useful. And you also get a compartment at the back. On the back of the bag, you also get a zip compartment here. It's all very nice, it's lined with suede. Um, this can fit a normal size uh, iPhone in the back, just to give an idea. I think you could also get a plus size in there. So that's one thing that I really do like about this bag because if you are constantly picking your phone up like I am to take pictures or videos, whatever it is, um, you can just quickly grab your phone without having to go into the bag. So some really quick pros and cons that I have found with this bag. Um, because it's been so popular, a few things can go wrong with this bag. Mine's still perfectly fine, but if you do use this as a workhorse, the bag has, it's quite well known for having a lot of glazing around um, the edges of the bag, which is this part here, and this can crack. And then I've also seen them, because this concertina is out, so you can make it like bigger and smaller, sometimes the canvas here uh, can also crack. That hasn't happened with this bag, um, with mine specifically, but I haven't used it a lot. And the only other downside with this bag is this lock here on the front, obviously it's very shiny. Um, as you are opening the bag and closing it a lot and trying to get this into the hole to get it to close, um, it can get a bit frustrating. The bag kind of needs to be full for you to do that, but it can scratch as well. So I've actually got hardware protectors on this bag. Other than those cons, I would say the best thing about this bag is it's such a good size. And the fact you've got your two big compartments inside, you've got your additional, you've got your zipper on the back, it's just really useful. That is why it's so popular. So out of 10, I would rate the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse about a seven, mostly due to some of the manufacturing issues with the glazing, the canvas cracking, and also the um, hardware on the front. It does scratch quite easily if you don't have hardware protectors on there. If you're interested in purchasing hardware protectors, I'll pop a link up here for you. They're about 10 pounds. They are so worth it um, to start. I've seen so many of these absolutely ruined. But overall, I think seven out of 10. 
Bag number two is another one from Louis Vuitton. This is actually my most used everyday bag. Um, this is the Louis Vuitton Odium bag. Uh, this is the PM size, but you can also get this in an MM size, which is larger than this if you want to carry more. And again, this is quite similar to the Pochette Matisse here in terms of size. This one's taller. This one will fit a small bottle of water in. You can stand a bottle of water up. This one, not so much. So I've actually found that I use this more when I'm going on walks and stuff. The Pochette Matisse is probably a bit dressier than the Odeon bag. But overall, I really like this. This one definitely has more of a casual vibe if that's what you are going for. You get a really thick leather strap there, very comfortable to wear. I went with the black leather. You can get the normal Vachetta leather as well. Most useful, You've got a huge pocket on the front here. I currently have a mask inside, but what I will do, again, because I like to get my be able to access my phone quite easily, I just pop my phone in the front of the bag, which makes it so much easier or anything that I need to access really easily. And then I can keep everything else inside the bag, which I won't need to access so much. Um, but yeah, it's very secure because you've got the zipper on there. I would actually say this is probably maybe like an eight out of 10 kind of number. And the reason being is it's just got less things to go wrong with it than the Pochette Matisse. So that is why I'm rating it slightly higher. But this one only really works if you want to go for more of a casual vibe. Next up is the Louis Vuitton bum bag. I promise not all the bags in this video are going to be Louis Vuitton. I'm just starting with Louis Vuitton. So this is the bum bag. I have the World Tour version. That is why it has black leather. Um, you can get the a cheaper version, which is just the normal one with Vachetta leather. But I really like black leather. I just think it's much easier to maintain and I'm more likely to use the bag. World Tour version, um, you do have to wait longer for them and you do have to customize them with a sticker. So mine has a Louis Vuitton lock on the back there. But yeah, I really, really love this bag. I wasn't so sure about it before I actually got one, um, but I've absolutely, I'm like such a bum bag convert now. I adore it. So you might be saying this is a bum bag, this is not a crossbody bag. I see people and I use this bag. Um, I don't think I've ever actually worn it as a bum bag, but obviously I have that option. You can't take this strap off. It is like fully attached, so you can't swap straps. But I have extended mine so that I can use it as a shoulder bag. But again, because you can extend it quite a lot, you can also use it as a crossbody bag. And I would actually give this about an eight to nine out of 10 score, which is really high for a crossbody bag, even though it's not meant to be a crossbody bag. And that's just because I feel so safe using this bag um, when I've got like important things in there. I don't know, I don't feel like someone could easily get access to the bag. That's a really important thing for me. And again, because I got the one with black leather, I'm just so happy to kind of use it every day. So if you want a crossbody that you can just throw around, uh, throw on, it feels safe and secure. It's not too big. It's never gonna get too heavy because you can't put huge items in here, but you can fit everything that you need for every day, phone, purse, keys, that kind of thing. Yeah, I would say eight to nine out of 10. Next up is the Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandelore bag or bandelier. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that but we're just gonna roll with it. Um, this is mine. I have a Speedy 30. Uh, they're often referred to short-term Speedy Bs. Um, and the difference between the Speedy and the Speedy Bs are that the, uh, the bandolier, bandolier versions have this hoop on the side of the bag and you get a detachable strap like so. This one I can fully adjust. So you can wear it obviously as a shoulder bag or as a crossbody bag. I can adjust this if I want it to sit higher um, because it's sat quite low at the minute. I highly recommend, I know it's tempting to go for cheaper versions sometimes. I highly recommend the uh, Speedy B versions. I would never get this bag without these straps on the side if I could help it. Uh, you can get the Speedy 25, which refers to 25 centimeters. 30 centimeters, that's what this one is. You get 35 centimeters too. So. There's a nice range of sizes there, whichever speedy you want to go for. So overall, I think this is a really great crossbody and a lot of crossbody bags are quite small in size because crossbodies tend to work better with a smaller size bag. 
but this one worked really really well and it's obviously much bigger than the other crossbody bags that we've already taken a look at so if you are in need of a larger crossbody i would highly recommend this one now i would give this maybe like a seven to eight out of ten um cons I don't really have any cons about this bag to be honest it's it's really easy to use it does exactly what you expect it to it doesn't have the like external pockets on or zippers so it's not like the most practical for me every day like you know if you want to grab your phone and um, you don't have that option with this you have to go into the entire bag and the way that these bags are made you can get into them but this opening maybe isn't as like easy to get into um well it is but like finding things in the bottom of the bag you can't kind of see everything in there sometimes so yeah i see this probably more as an everyday work slash travel bag when you need to take more with you it wouldn't be my like everyday crossbody bag if i was heading out shopping somewhere so this one's more good for things like travel and when you need to carry a bit more and that's why i've given it a seven to eight out of ten the next bag is the Saint Laurent Lulu bag. You can get this in about four different sizes, but the one that I have here is the Lulu toy bag, which is the smallest size and it is super, super cute. So this is a very simple crossbody bag. You just have one flap opening. You don't have anything on the back of the bag. It's really simple here open it up and you've got one sorry yeah one large compartment with a divider down the middle there if you can see that and you've got a zipper compartment at the back now obviously what you get inside because this one's got some card slots differs depending on which size that you go for but i think with the ysl lulu bag this is a very popular crossbody from saint laurent the reason being is I actually feel this is more of a dressy bag. So I would use this one as an everyday bag, but I wouldn't go on a walk with it, like around a forest, meeting friends for a coffee. I wouldn't wear this one because it feels a little bit too um, almost special, like it's a full on leather bag. This would probably be, this, this would definitely be like an everyday, maybe like a nice shopping trip in London, something like that. And then you could also take it out for food in the evening and it definitely wouldn't look out of place. You've got detachable uh, straps here and then you can adjust this strap here, but not by a lot. There's like three, three perforated holes there. That is it. Just throw it on as a crossbody. Uh, it hits quite low on the body there but the one thing that i do like about longer straps is when in winter if you've got like big jumpers on big coats on you need that longer strap so that it sits cross body nicely i would give this one a seven out of ten um just because i know that the corners of the bottom corners of these bags can wear quite a lot um and you don't have that external pocket on the outside of this like i say this is the toy version but i don't think correct me if i'm wrong i don't think you do get a pocket on the back of any of the other sizes but yeah if you are looking for a more dressier one definitely go for this one overall seven out of ten from me the next designer crossbody we are going even dressier than the last one we are going to saint laurent yet again i do feel like a lot of their bags are dressier this is the sunset bag i love this bag it's so simple like the lulu bag um, but even more dressy more boxy a bit more structured you can get this in a wallet on chain which is a really small one a small a medium that's what this one is and you can also get a large version i decided to go with the medium though and um, that was definitely like the best size for me a slight con with this bag is that it is quite heavy um, you've got quite a nice uh, chain on here it's not the lightest it's also uh, a great bag in terms of its size because you can concertina it out to make it slightly bigger you get two compartments inside there one at the back one at the front and then another pocket here on the front of the bag so you've got absolutely loads of compartments you can't fit because it's got so many compartments you can't fit large items in here but it just helps to keep everything structured inside the bag like your phone purse little things like that hand sanitizer whatever it is that you need i would give this an eight to nine 
out of 10. And one of the reasons is compared to uh, other evening bags such as if you wanted a Chanel bag, this one is under, well under half the price of a lot of Chanel bags. So I highly recommend this if you are looking for a designer evening bag. It doesn't have a top handle. It does have a pocket on the back for your phone. But let me just show you quickly. You can use it as a shoulder bag. And then here we go as a cross body bag. I think this one sits perfectly. This is the medium again, and it's just such a lovely size. I think it really is well suited to a cross body bag. So yeah, overall eight to nine out of 10. Staying with the slightly dressier theme, but with some casual vibes, next is the Chanel 19 bag. Um, I have two 19 bags. This is the large size. This is a black tweed. And I also have the small size here in leather. This is the caramel color. I actually got quite a few questions when I got both of these sizes. Which one is the best crossbody bag? Because this is one of the best crossbody bags from Chanel, definitely. Like it was designed to be a crossbody. You can use them with their top handle. So that looks quite cute. Um, you can't detach the strap. It is a chain, it's on there. That is not coming off. You can use it here as a shoulder bag, but it's best used crossbody bag. So yeah, that sits really nice size. Again, similar to the YSL that I just showed you. And let me just show you quickly. This is the, the large size because a lot of people said, is the large like okay to use as a crossbody bag? So this is the large as a crossbody. I mean, obviously it is quite a bit bigger. Um, I don't mind that. I think it still looks fine as a crossbody bag. So if you are looking for a dressier, um, definitely more expensive um, crossbody bag, uh, this one that I think the Chanel 19 goes perfectly from day to night. It's definitely more of a casual evening bag, but it's definitely more of a dressy everyday bag. And I'm really liking the kind of look and vibe of the 19. So that's why I have two of them. The small one is the better size for the crossbody just because it's smaller. And like I've already said, uh, smaller bags tend to be better crossbody. They have that trusty external pocket. You can put your phone in the back of the bag so you don't have to keep going into the bag. And they're one of the easiest bags to get into out of all the bags that I've shown you slash I'm going to show you. This is probably the, the easiest one to get into. You just open it out, super simple inside there. I've actually got um, a liner inside of here to protect the lining, but you can just access and see everything inside of the bag. So this is a very easy bag to use. Overall then, given the fact that these bags are also quite heavy because they've, they've got quite a lot going on in terms of the chains, the large is, is quite heavy, the small, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like super heavy, but these definitely aren't the lightest of bags. So that's a bit of a con as well. Um, but given everything in total, I would give these maybe a seven out of 10. And the reason is the weight, but how much they cost. They are very expensive crossbody bags, but I do think they are incredibly beautiful and easy to use if you are looking for something and you really like the 19. Next is another Chanel bag. This is one of my favorites after the 19 is the Chanel boy bag. This is my 19P, I believe it is gray. This is the old medium size. Um, so this is the medium kind of size out of the range. You can get a small, which is quite small and you can get a large as well. This is in caviar leather with the gold hardware. And you can only wear this as a shoulder bag like so, or you can extend the strap. Just get that like that and wear it as a crossbody. The old medium sits higher than the small. I've done a comparison video if you want to watch that so you can see how they fall slightly differently. The small, the strap on the small is longer than the medium. Some pros of the boy then, it's a very simple design. They come in loads of different colors. You've got those different size options available to you as well. Um, there are some cons to this bag though that I want to go through. I'll just show you as well. So it's very easy to use, very similar to the 19 bag, just one big kind of compartment inside. But the thing that I find with this bag, it can be a little bit harder to get into. Like 
you kind of need to hold this flap open and um, whereas the 19 you can flip it back and it'll stay back so the boy doesn't do that this is definitely i would say because it's more structured you have no external pocket like you do on the 19 there's nothing on the back there on any of them you don't get that option so everything has to go inside the bag so you have to literally open the whole bag up every time you want to get something out of it the chain can sometimes get a bit like tangled and a bit frustrating overall it's okay um, the boy as well will often i've not used this bag so much but it will wear on these corners and as you can see the the actual bag is smaller than what it looks so they are deceivingly smaller than what they look this looks like quite a big bag but actually inside i would say it's a small bag you can literally get like a purse and a phone in there so for those reasons this is hard because i really like this style of bag but in terms of like practicality i would probably give this like a six out of ten as a designer evening bag i love it as an everyday bag it would probably get on my nerves so yeah a six out of ten for this one next is the gucci soho disco bag now i don't personally have this in my collection um, because i do appreciate and understand that this is such a popular bag if you want something it's got the logo on the front but it doesn't kind of scream it out you know it's not like a mono grand print it's in in the full-on leather plenty of different colors as well i would probably say this was more popular a few years ago but it's still popular to this day because it's very useful you've just got a zipper across the top they retail in the uk currently at eight hundred and sixty five pounds i believe they are so probably just over a thousand dollars which isn't too bad for a designer full leather bag so overall i would give this bag a six out of ten you don't have your external pocket you can't change the chain that is on the bag um, yeah, and I feel like they're very simple, but if that's the style you are going for, you can actually fit quite a lot in this bag. It's quite surprising. You can get, if you have to be quite um, organized though with how you put stuff into the bag, stack it up and you can get quite a lot in there. Personally, I prefer it when you've got a bit of excess room and things aren't like jammed in. Uh, I like to carry too much with me clearly, but if you are looking for an everyday bag that's simple, full on leather, it's less than a thousand pounds and not far off a thousand, dollars i definitely think the gucci soho is a good one to consider but overall for me a six out of ten another gucci bag next the gucci marmont bag you can get this in a mini a small a medium a large and maybe an extra large but basically you've got a wide range of sizes this is a full leather bag i prefer the marmont bag to the gucci soho disco there's a little bit more going on there you know you've got your gg on the front in the hardware you've got your nice chain with the leather strap on you could double it up as a shoulder bag or wear it as a crossbody bag so i think therefore worth the extra money compared to the gucci soho disco bag it has a flap opening so you can get to everything inside of the bag overall i would give this a 7 out of 10 as a crossbody bag i know some people who use this bag absolutely like a workhorse and they still look really really good like the leather is fantastic quality on them the next crossbody is from Prada and this is the camera bag. I really like this from Prada. So you can tell that it's designer, it's going to have the quality uh, you know, of a Prada bag. However, it doesn't super shout, it's not a monogram again, you've just got the nice Prada on there. I think this one is done really, really well. So it retails around £950 currently here in the UK. I'm sure it will be above about £1,000 very, very soon. So probably nearing about one and a half thousand dollars maybe slightly less than that in the us you can get it in quite a few different colors but yeah if i was looking for a more simple definitely every day i wouldn't use this as an evening bag um, i prefer uh, saint laurent bags for that then i definitely would look at this prada camera bag i would give this a six to seven out of ten um, i don't think you've got your external pocket on the bag it's very simple very similar to the gucci soho disco bag i would be more inclined to go for the prada one because they're saffiano leather 
which is like, it has like um, a kind of texture to it. It's so great because if you scratch it, it doesn't necessarily show up too much as it would on a smooth leather, for example. So I think uh, Prada Saffiano leather is really, really good quality and I wouldn't be too scared to use this bag as way more of a workhorse. And I prefer it to the Gucci bag because the Gucci one is more popular. Um, and I just like the look of the Prada one more as well. The next crossbody is from Givenchy. This is the Givenchy Antigona bag. This is specifically the mini size. This comes in various sizes. However, it is not a crossbody bag when you go for the small or medium. They are just shoulder bags. You cannot crossbody them. The mini, however, it comes with a detachable crossbody strap. So this is specifically about the mini. I really love the Antigona. I have it in the medium size. I've had a small and I, I really like the mini as well. Reason being is that these bags just keep their shape and I just think they look, again, fantastic. From every single angle, it doesn't matter. There's nothing inside this bag now and it looks just as amazing as it would when it's full. You've got your top handles, so you can use it like that. Or obviously you've got your strap to use as a shoulder or cross body bag. I think it sits at quite a nice height. Obviously they've had to consider the handles here, but I don't think it sits too low or too high. So I really like that about this bag and it's very secure. You've got a zipper across the top there. Um, the only thing I will say again, like similar to the Speedy Bandalore, because they've got a zip opening at the top, you can't, you can access everything, but if you have the bag full, sometimes you kind of find yourself trying to dig around to find something at the bottom of the bag. And um, that's what I find with openings like this. But there are some cons to the Antigona Mini as well. Uh, the main one I would say is these, this fastening they decided to put on uh, the bag is so frustrating. So let me just show you. It's not like a clip. You have to, the, you just do that there, but you can be, uh, I've been sat down before, picked the bag up and somehow this has wiggled its way out. Um, and then I pick the bag up and it just goes flying on the floor. A really simple, I think, design flaw there that could really easily be solved. Um, but overall, I really do like the Antigona. Because of this issue, I would give this bag a seven out of 10. And the reason being is I love the structure. I think this is actually quite a good bag to go from every day to evening. Like you could just wear it as a top handle bag in the evening, it doesn't look out of place. And finally, this isn't often talked about um, when it comes to crossbody bags, but I actually quite like this bag, it's grown on me. Uh, this is the Prada Cahia bag, uh, another Prada bag. Um, this is an old version with a lion knocker on the front. Some people really hate this style. Um, they don't make this one anymore. Um, but the Cahia bag actually has quite a nice story. Um, they're actually meant to look like notebooks. That is why they have this edging on here so that if you look at it from the side, or sorry, the bottom there, it looks like a book. So I really like that. Um, I think they're really beautiful. They're quite different. Some slight cons, they're quite expensive. These are two and a half thousand pounds to buy one brand new from the brand. Again, Prada bags, I generally go pre-loved because you can make some huge savings there. The Cahia bag is not lightweight, especially not this one with the lion on the front. Um, they've got all this ex excess metal around the corners, which they don't necessarily need. It is a shoulder bag, or you can adjust the strap as well if you do want to wear it cross body. What this looks like as a cross body bag, I think this sits like so perfectly. It doesn't sit too high or too low and it very is a statement piece. Like everything from the detailing of the strap there when you're wearing it, just to the detailing of the edges of the back. I don't know, it just, I kind of want to use the word magical. That is the word that comes to my mind when I think of this bag. In terms of an everyday practicality, I definitely would rate this maybe like a five out of 10, but as an evening bag and just something that makes you feel really special, it's quite different. You know, it's not a Louis Vuitton or a Chanel. Uh, I, I feel like these are less common. Then I would give this probably like 
maybe an eight out of 10. I mean, it's a shame it's not got a pocket on the back for your phone, but I don't feel like this bag was built for practicality. It was built for drama. It was built for aesthetics. And I actually really appreciate that. And so I promised at the start of this video that I would reveal out of all the 13 crossbody bags that I've just taken you through, which ones are my favorite in terms of an evening bag, an everyday bag, and the best value for money. This has been an incredibly hard decision. So all I can do is share with you for the first one, the best everyday bag from this crossbody collection. And it's the bag that I use the most as a crossbody. I talk about this bag a lot on this channel. Sorry, you probably already heard me talk about it if you are already a subscriber. This is my favorite crossbody bag to use every day. The best designer crossbody bag that's slightly more dressier, um, maybe more for evenings. Hard choice again, but I would go with a 19 bag. I would go with a Chanel 19. Yeah, you can definitely use these in the day, but I think due to their price, uh, for me anyway, I'd be more inclined to use this on more special occasions and more in the evening. So for something that looks a bit dressier, I would go with the 19. It's kind of cool, trendy vibes, but also dressy vibes. I'm a Chanel bag. And the best value for money crossbody bag. This has been really hard because there's some really popular bags here, but yeah, obviously taking into consideration the price, I would actually go for the Louis Vuitton bum bag. Now the world tour is uh, more like 1500 pounds, but the normal one is just about 1,100, 200 pounds. Um, so it's one of the cheaper bags that I went through today. And just in terms of it's like practicality, like I say, you can wear it as a shoulder bag, wear it as a crossbody bag. And it's the only one that I've shown you out of all of them that you could also use as a bum bag. It's what we call them here in the UK or fanny pack if you are from the US. I know most of my subscribers are. Let me know what you think to my choices. This has been an epic video on designer crossbody bags. And I really hope that now you have a really good sense of which crossbody bag is going to be perfect for you. Now, speaking of value for money, coming up next, I will link the video here for you. I'm going to be taking you through the best value for money designer bags in my opinion after collecting them for over 10 years because some really are good value for money and some aren't. So save yourself time and money by watching this video coming up next.